Hey programmers, welcome back. In this lesson, what I want to do is talk to you about the Q data structure. So there are a few things I want to take care of right now. What I want to do is definitely define what a queue is and kind of differentiate it from other data structures that we're aware of, as well as describe any commonplace applications and use cases for the queue data structure. And of course, by the end of this lesson, what I also want to do is implement a queue in actually two different ways. I want to implement a queue using an array as well as with a linked list. So let's start from the beginning. What is a queue? Well, a queue is a type of data structure that stores multiple items, right? You can think of it as a collection. A queue is really characterized by the operations that we perform on the queue. Mainly, we can add to the back of the queue, we call that enqueuing a new item. We can also remove from the front of the queue, we call that dequeuing an item. A queue is a linearly ordered structure, so you can really just think about it as if it's a line, right? A line where you add to one end of the line and remove from the other end. For this reason, we refer to a queue as a first in, first out data structure, or a FIFO data structure, right? Because the first thing that enters the queue will guarantee to be the first thing that leaves the queue. So let's start to get some insight into how we should visualize a queue. The first thing we should notice is uh, when you visualize a queue, you'll want to really reference the two particular ends of the queue, right? I'm going to be adding things in the back, and then items will leave through the front. So let's say I'm doing a queue operation. In particular, I wanted to enqueue the item Alvin, right? So remember that enqueue just means adding something to a queue. If I enqueue Alvin, that means that Alvin just shows up uh, within the queue, right? Alvin's the only item within my queue. Let's say that I added another item. So I'm enqueuing Cindy. Cindy would enter through the back of the queue, which means that Cindy would come after Alvin, right? So here I have Cindy at the end of my queue, and notice that Alvin is at the front of my queue. Let's go ahead and enqueue one more item. Let's enqueue Simha. And of course, Simha would be added after Cindy. So here I have three items in my queue, and let's say I wanted to remove one. What I mean is I want to dequeue an item out of my queue. When you dequeue, you can't choose any item to remove. You must always remove the front element. So that means Alvin should be removed from the queue, which means that now Cindy is at the front and Simha is at the back of the queue. We can do another dequeue operation, which of course means that Cindy leaves, and I just have Simha in my queue. At this point, if I wanted to, I can continue in queuing some items and would follow the same pattern. Something you'll want to know about queues is they can either have a max length or not have a max length. It's really up to you depending on your use case scenario. That being said, what really are the use cases for a queue? That being said, what is a queue actually useful for? Well, we just described a few use cases. In general, a queue is useful when you need a pattern where it's first come first serve, and there are a lot of circumstances that require this sort of pattern. In particular, queues are really useful when you want to track requests for a limited resource. So for example, if my limited resource is just cashiers, then I can use a queue to really track the people standing in line for an open cashier. Or let's say that my limited resource is the printer for my office. I can use a queue to track the jobs that come through. That way they can be fulfilled in a particular order. Right? We want to make sure that the first job that comes in is also served first. In a more algorithmic sense, queues are also really useful to implement graph algorithms, which we'll cover later on in the course. So with all that background information out of the way, I think it's time to implement a queue. So to get going, I'll show you probably the simplest way you can implement a queue. And it's really just a matter of using an array. So let me create my queue over here. And I'll make it an empty array in JavaScript. And what you'll want to do is really just commit to using specific methods on your array. I know when it comes to my queue, I need to be adding items at one end of my array, and then I need to be removing items from the opposite end. So if I want to use that pattern in my JavaScript language, what I can do to add elements is just do queue.push, right? So this would be adding some element to the end of the array. So let's say I enqueued some, some letters here. So I'll add A and then also B and C. And so what does that mean? Well, in the context of my queue, the first element will refer to the front of my queue and the last element will refer to the back, right? So let me run this code. So the way you should really frame this in your mind is A is at the front of my queue, C is in the back. Of course, if I went ahead and enqueued something else with push, that means D would be at the very back, right? Right behind uh, the C value. So if I want a queue order to remove elements, I should be removing from the front. To do that in JavaScript, I can say queue.shift, and I'll shift out automatically the first element. So I'll print out the queue afterwards. So A should be gone. I should just have B, C, D ending up in my queue. So using an array is really straightforward and it's really useful if you're in a pinch and just need a queue to operate on quickly. That being said, using an array as a queue is probably not the most efficient implementation. We know that when we do an operation like shift in JavaScript, that's removing the front element of an array, which means that all subsequent elements that follow it have to be shifted over uh, by one index downward. 
And so in the case of dequeuing an element for us right now, that means that that would run in O of n time complexity. I'll go ahead and tell you that a maximally efficient queue should have a constant runtime for its NQ and DQ operations, right? So if you wanted a fast queue in JavaScript, you're going to have to implement it in another way. There are also some programming languages that actually come out of the box with some native uh, queue data structure that is very efficient. But let's say that your language of choice does not have that option. Well, you could just implement one manually. Another way I can implement a queue is to use a linked list. So let's start with some basics. Previously, we learned about linked lists, and we'll start by defining a very simple queue node class. Just like we expect, it's going to have the kind of base blueprint of a regular linked list node, meaning that I'm going to construct a node with some value, which I'll just store as a property inside, and I will also need a pointer to the next node. And I'll initialize that to be null over here. But now let's begin structuring our main queue class. So I'll define my queue over here. And in terms of the constructor, what information do we need to store? I know that in the context of a singly linked list, I need to store some reference to the head. In a similar way for the queue, you'll need to store a reference to the front. And actually, it'll be very useful to also store a reference to the back, right? So I'll actually add both of these uh, pointers inside. And I'll explain why it's nice to have both pointers in a little bit. I think with a queue, it's also very easy to track the size of the queue, which since we start out with an empty queue, we'll initialize to zero. But now let's begin implementing some operations. Let's work on our in queue operation. Remember that this means I want to add some value into my queue. In particular, that value should be added uh, to the back of my queue. What we'll have to do here is think about the very, very start of our queue. If I begin my queue empty, then the first in queue operation that I do actually has to be a kind of special case. So I'll go ahead and check. Hey, if right now the size of my queue is zero, then I need to add the very first element into my queue, which means I could do something like create my new node. Maybe I'll do it up here. So I'll say my new node, and that'll be a new queue node with my target value. And then from there, I'll need to make sure that this dot front is the new node, and it should also be this dot back. So it's a really interesting case for a queue of only one item. Technically, that item is the front and also the back. Now let's think about the generic case, right? So in the generic case, what I want to do is handle the scenario where there are already some existing nodes in my queue, which means if I add a new node, it should come after an existing one. So what I can say is I'll say this dot back dot next is going to be equal to the new node. And in which case, I want to have access to this node I created. So maybe I'll lift it one scope higher. So from line 34, that means that I'm adding a node that comes right after my current back. And right after I do that, I want to set this dot back to actually be that new node. That way I can maintain uh, the proper back point, right? Any point in time, I hope that this dot back refers to the very, very last node in the queue. So let's do a quick little check to make sure that this else statement does what it should. So let's say I had a queue with these values. I'll go ahead and say that the front of my queue is this A, and the back of my queue would refer to this last value of C. If I'm running this else statement, I'm saying this.back.next, so I'm setting C's next to be some new node. Let's say I'm adding D. And right after that, I set this.back to be that new node. So that means I'm shifting the internal property for the back to this new D node, and that's exactly what I want. By maintaining a reference to this.back in the correct position at all times, that allows me to quickly enqueue items. So that seems all right, but let's put it to the test. Let me create my nice queue to mess with, so I'll create a new queue. That means it starts out empty, and then from there, I'll enqueue some different values. So I'll just enqueue some letters. We'll do A, B, and C. And what I'll also be sure to do in my enqueue method is I want to make sure that I actually reassign uh, the size. So whenever I enqueue something, that means you would definitely be lengthening the queue by one. So I'll just do size plus plus. Let me just console.log my queue. So that'll console.log my queue.size. So that should be three. And then we'll go ahead and check some of our different pointers over here. So let's just make sure we can get three right now. Awesome, there's my size of three. And just to be super duper sure, I can do things like manually check, hey, if I do my queue dot front dot value, 
and I do my queue.back.value, the front of the queue should be the A and the back of the queue should be the C. Awesome, so that's looking pretty good. Let's keep this rolling and work on our DQ method. So recall that DQ just means we always remove the front uh, out of our queue. So the first thing we'll wanna take care of in this DQ method is that it should traditionally return the value that you just DQ'd, right? So what I'll say is, let me save this.front. I'll save that as maybe just some, some value. So I'll call that my removed node. And then by the end of my function, I know I want to return that remove nodes value. Cool. But now let's think about how you can actually remove something. Well, I know that I'd always be removing the front node. So if I just want to remove the front node, I can say this.front equals this.front.next. Of course, along with that, what you'll want to do is make sure that we reset uh, the size of this queue, right? So if I remove something, that means I'm decreasing its size by one. Cool. So let's kind of think about this code and do a quick sanity check, right? So let's say that I had uh, this current queue of A, B, C, D. We know that the front pointer is going to be over here. Let's also set the back pointer, which would be pointing to the last node D. So if I'm removing something, then I'd be setting this.front to be this.front.next, which means that my front pointer would now point to B. So it kind of look like this. Obviously my back pointer remains unchanged. And since a nothing actually refers to the A node anymore, it would be garbage collected, effectively removing it from my queue. So this code seems good so far, but let's think about some edge scenarios. I think when you're deleting something, it's really important to think about what happens upon like the last deletion. So if I had a queue of only a single value, it would look something like this, right? It has a single node that contains A and its next is null. And at that point, it should be the case that currently my this.front refers to that node A, and also this.back should also refer to that A node, right? Cool. So let's say I was running through this logic. I set this.front to be this.front.next, so my front pointer now points to null, and that's good so far. And then I'll decrement the size, that's okay, and I'd actually be done with this function. But things are not totally correctly shaped, right? Although I corrected my this.front pointer, I did not correct my this.back pointer, right? So technically when your queue is of size one, you'll want to actually manually correct the back pointer. So I can say something like, hey, if my current queue's size is exactly one, then I also need to be sure to set this.back to be null, just to make it consistent for other operations where you may potentially NQ and DQ uh, more items over here. So now with this logic in place, it should be the case that my back pointer now correctly points at null, which effectively truly deletes uh, that A node. So this code is looking pretty good. I think we should give it a test run though. So here I have enqueued uh, three nodes, three values. Let's start by just dequeuing some of them, right? So I'm gonna do my queue.dq. And on my first DQ operation, that should remove the A. Then I'll remove the B. And along the way, that should also be returning to me those values. Looks like I have a little typo over here. I said q.size. That should really be this.size. Let's give that a run now. All right, and there I see my a and b. And to be extra sure, let's go ahead and now nq something else. So let's nq, I don't know, a d. And then I'll go ahead and dq two more things. So I should get in my dq order a, b, and then c and d. Awesome, that looks pretty good. So at this point, my queue should be empty, which means that if I check the size of it, it ought to be zero. And the front should be null and the back should also be null. I wanna make sure that my queue is in a consistent state. Cool, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, maybe one thing that you'd want to like add on into your code is maybe some like error handling. So right now, I can probably imagine that if I had my queue of like four things, and then I DQ'd four times, that means it's empty. If I DQ'd a fifth time, I wonder what would happen. Let's try it. Here I get an error because I'm trying to DQ and there actually are no nodes uh, inside of the link list that underlies my queue. And so you could handle that with a nice if statement. You can go ahead and check, hey, if this.size equals zero, then there's not much to do. Maybe you just want to do an early return and maybe return null. That way you can handle all of these edge cases. Awesome, so that's our nice implementation for a queue using a linked list. Let's take a quick lay of the land to wrap up. 
So in terms of the time complexity of like our NQ operation, this actually runs in constant time, right? Although we're doing like linked list operations, I don't have any loops, right? I don't have any recursive code because I don't have to traverse through the entire uh, linked list. Technically, I'm always maintaining proper references to the immediate front and the immediate back. That way I can perform my NQ and also my DQ uh, operations in constant time, right? If you maintain these pointers in their valid positions always, then you can run adding and removing nodes in constant time. So there we have it. In this lesson, we talked a lot about queues, right? Queues are a fundamental data structure. They follow a first in, first out order. Main operations are you want to be adding things to the back of the queue, removing things from the front of the queue as well. Coming up in the next video, we'll solve a fun little challenge that actually utilizes a queue. So stay tuned for that.